Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Welcome to Spectrum today. Looking forward to a great time together with you. We're going to be talking a little bit about education. Mm -hmm. Have a, a wonderful educator from here in our community is going to be talking to us about a charter school that deals with STEM. So that's going to okay. be interesting coming up. So stay with us. Awesome. Well, we have been experiencing some rain lately. Isn't that kind of nice? Kind it of is refreshing. Very, I do like the rain. We need the rain. And it always cleans everything. All of the pollen, everything settles down. So it's very nice. Right. Doesn't <laughs> clean your car. Just want to put that out there. Seems like they're always no. dirtier, that the uh, the dust blows in and uh, gives you a reason to wash it. But hey, that's, that's okay. part of living in New Mexico. Yeah. You know, you're, some things are cleaner, the air, and maybe your car's dirtier. Oh, well. Are you gearing up for the weekend? Well, this weekend, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, is going to be our preach-a-thon as we go through the book of Revelation. Now, this is only going to be something that we do online on uh, Facebook and YouTube. From Evangel Christian Center, but yeah, getting ready for that. I've been yeah. studying back Going through the notes. book of Revelation. I've taught yeah. on this before, but it's going to be fun. Yeah. Be part of that. It'll be a good time. Ready to jump into the news today? Sure. Here we go. First of all, this may surprise you, but China, now that you may have heard that China is engaged in quite a bit of surveillance in their mm -hmm. own country. I think it was back around 2013 that they set up a goal that by 2020, which we've already passed, that they would have a, a, a they call it their Ch China's State Council issued guidelines for the establishment of a social credit uh, system. Mm -hmm. This was designed to watch people through a, a myriad of cameras and to, to watch what they were doing everywhere inside of the country. Mm -hmm. And if they had a, uh, a disposition that was negative toward the government, yes. then they would begin reducing their credit score. And by so doing, they would eliminate eventually their capacity maybe to buy a home, mm -hmm. their ability to uh, travel, travel on airplanes mm -hmm. and different things of that nature and would really restrict them into what they could or could not do. And denied social services, yeah. Yeah, yeah. think about that. That's crazy. crazy, right. And they're listening, they're watching. I think it said there were 626 million surveillance, surveillance cameras. cameras. And smartphone scanners. Mm -hmm. Now, that has now been detected in North America. Canada. Uh, in Vancouver, I believe it is, they have now found in Vancouver, Canada, uh, that they are operating this at what's called the, and I'm not sure I can say this correctly, Hadalio Hot Pot. It had more than 60 cameras that were watching. 30 uh, tables. People, yeah, yeah, 30, 30 tables, tables in there and sending the video directly back to China, which breaks Canadian law. And desire, why people say, well, why in the world would they want to be surveilling someplace that is in Canada? Well, they tell us that the... Uh, the Chinese view that as a gateway into mm -hmm. North America, of course, into no doubt Canada, and ultimately into the United States, so that they can be watching and monitoring Everyone. and dealing with yeah. this. Pretty frightening stuff. That is that is scary. But you know, we have cameras everywhere. I think we covered a story not too long ago, and um, that tracks how many times you leave the house, what you're doing, mm -hmm. even now. I don't. I don't. Well, it just depends on what, what you have, if they can hear the audio on it or not, but um, in terms of privacy, right. like in your neighborhood. But. I think a, a normal person's picked up on, well, it was seemed like it was normally a couple dozen cameras, and I don't remember if that was daily or weekly. You, you have to understand that there's a lot of traffic surveillance cameras that city, state, yeah. governments have that have been placed, uh, you know, on all sorts of uh like stop lights and things of that nature, and they are monitoring you. You think about going into grocery stores or into yeah. department stores. How many yeah. cameras are there? How many cameras are in your neighborhood? You're constantly seeing video that's being supplied where people have cameras on their outside sure. of their house, and they're uh -huh. picking up video of events that are happening in your neighborhood. Right. The, these, it says that, um, for example, it's used uh, for people who, to keep tra track on people who are um, criticizing the leader, Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. And so when that happens or they catch your conversation, they know what you're doing, then they restrict those things, which is really scary too, because if I've, 
it's not far from happening here, listening to what people say, vocabulary of those mm -hmm. in the media, those in the news, even the leadership talking about restrictions on our freedom. So it kind of, it kind of goes along. That's what it reminds me of. Well, listen to this. Now, another hot mic moment was caught uh, where two prof yeah. professors at Roosevelt University in Illinois were caught uh, on open mic mm -hmm. on a Zoom call as th that they were teaching their students to reorganize America in a way that a lot of people would consider to be Marxist. Uh, Gina Harris and Ralph Mirtry, Mart uh, uh, they were on a they serve on a school board in Oak Park uh, and uh, River Forest High School. And they were, they were just caught bragging mm -hmm. about the fact that they are working diligently to take the minds of their students and bend them yeah. in a direction of uh, left-leaning thought processes. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the statements was, I mean, it's all social justice all day, every day. I get to talk about the things I love. I'm really living the life over here. And this was uh, Harris, who's an adjunct uh, professor, uh, talking about that. They talk about other things of teaching classes that were dealing with, uh, uh, you know, budgeting mm -hmm. and how that it all was based really on wanting people to know that, hey, your philosophy of life is going to yeah. depend on how things should even be budgeted. Change it. Yeah. Well, you know, you've Hot heard mic of, moment that might not have been so good. You've also, and, and they kind of played it off when they realized that they were on that Zoom call live and being recorded which is something that we learned a long time ago, at least I did, because if you'll remember when we were doing the cooking segment, I usually have my mic on and I don't realize that it's a hot mic. <laughs> you have to be very careful what you say because it can be recorded and then it'll be out there. But we've talked about, um, and it has been said before, that those in authority are saying that we need to reorganize or reprogram the children that are growing up in Christian and conservative Homes, yep. and we've heard that to said reprogram before. reprogram them away from believing in Christ. Yes. But listen to one of the other statements that they made, uh, one of them made. Yeah, I always flip our, out the kids that take my master's class on fiscal policy and public budgets within the first three or four, hour, cl four classes are devoted to the philosophy of social justice and how you organize society. We don't talk about one, you know, budgetary item. item. I tell you what's going on in a lot of our universities even right now, mm -hmm. but you know, there's other things. Yeah, in China right now, and you kind of this is almost like there's almost a, a theme, not necessarily mm -hmm. trying to have a theme, but it seems like the news is kind of moving in a direction today. Uh, in China, they are working diligently to remove apps, including Bible apps, mm -hmm. where you can read the Bible in China, yes. and to to wipe out Christianity by removing conversation mm -hmm. apps. Have you seen that? I did. I have seen that, and I. That's like I. I just can't believe that because here, it's we don't even think about it here. We think, well, I'll just download the Bible app. You get the verse of the day downloaded. We don't realize what a huge blessing it is. But there are people, and there are things out there that are trying that are working against it. You know, the enemy is working against it um, diligently. Yes. As people try to log on, they'll get this. Uh, we received a report that this account uh, violates internet. the internet user's public account information services management provision, <laughs> and its account has been blocked and suspended. And that's what's happening it's, in it's China. It's like, they want to tell people, and they are telling people, that Christianity is like a dark cult. That's exactly what they're saying. They're, tra they're training them when they're little. It's an evil cult. And there was a, a story of a, of a young little child who found literature in his home that was Christian literature, and that's the first thing that they said because he has been taught that Christianity is an evil cult. And, and I'm just like, I can't, I can't, I can believe it, but it's like, wow, it's right here in front of us. It's right here in front of us. Well, we're running out of time, but there's one more, and I want to hit this one quick. You'll have to watch the video for yourself online. But a driver was pulled over in L.A. County, and the, uh, the county officer had their own private video camera, camera mm -hmm. to, to video what was happening. Yes. And the person went off on them, um, calling them a murderer. Uh, they were pulled over and they did, the person didn't have apparently their driver's license. That's how, that's how they um, addressed um, the officer. Told the officer, you'll never be white. Said just a lot of just terrible things. And he called it into internal affairs. He wasn't a, it had, wasn't a white officer. I believe from what was said was she was calling him a Mexican racist. 
terrible. is what she called the officer. And he asked her for her ID. He said, do you know why you've been pulled over? And she said, um, he said, can I see your driver's license? She says, I do have a driver's license, but I don't have it with me. It's at home. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just, but he had his She's own, an educator. He, that's what she claimed. She, She's she an had, educator. He had his own video camera. And they say that that will probably prove to be beneficial in this regard. Well, we'll be back in just a minute. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. appreciate each and every one of you who join with us here on Spectrum and remember that this program is supported by those of you who are our faithful viewers and we are certainly appreciative of each and every one of you seeing so many of you who are stepping up and making a difference as we are celebrating 34 years of uh, operation this fall in the Albuquerque Santa Fe area. Isn't that yes, awesome? That is wonderful. We'd like to invite you to visit us online at kazq32.org find out all about us. You can find your favorite programs or if we have added new ones there and you can also give safely online. You can call into the station anytime at 505-884-8355 extension 101 to speak to someone. And if you're not on the mailing list and you do not have an envelope, the address to send your donation to is 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast Albuquerque, New Mexico 87109. If you'd like to be on the mailing list, Use the same number that I mentioned before, 505-884-8355. Give your name and address, and we'll be sure to include you with our monthly newsletter. You know, Alpha Omega Broadcasting is a not-for-profit entity, and so every time that you're making that donation, it is tax-deductible. But those donations help us as we are in the process, as we've been talking about for several months, of gaining additional equipment to build redundancy. Mm -hmm. We've been working on a new microwave system, which has been approved by the FCC, so we're thankful for that. Uh, which should be installed hopefully here in the next uh, little while as the engineers work their way through all of those things. We're also working on being able to purchase a, a backup transmitter, and that's really what we're saving money for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to raise about thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars $35,000 so that we will have that backup piece of equipment in place in case there's a failure with the main transmitter. So your donations to the President's Club of $50, $75, or $100 really make a difference as we move forward on that project. And many of you have been donating. And you know, some of you have been giving larger donations. Yes. Thank you. That really makes a difference. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. privilege to have with us today Dr. Jerron Campbell who is with ACES Charter Schools right here in the Albuquerque area and uh, Dr. Campbell we welcome you glad to be able to, to learn a little bit today about what you're involved with thanks for coming by thank you man good to be here well as we uh, get started today I think a, a good place to, to just start is tell us a little bit about yourself and then we want to learn about ACES uh, to find out more about what it's all about sure uh, well I'm from Detroit, Michigan, originally. Uh, I've been in Albuquerque now for uh, about four years. Um, my background uh, is pretty much engineering. Uh, that's where I started my career. Wow. Uh, I switched over to education uh, some years ago uh, at this point. But um, what made me switch was I started a program to help students get ready for college back in Detroit, uh, primarily the ACT and SAT. And uh, so as I did that work, education really became a passion for me. And uh, eventually I decided to make the change over to education full time. So I've worked in a few school districts around the country and now I'm here in Albuquerque and decided to start my own school. Well, that's a pretty exciting path and kind of an, an interesting path. We've had the privilege of sharing with some different folks over the course of months about charter schools. Many of them not started, but your charter school is actually open and running and, and functioning. So tell us a little bit about the mission of ACES. What is it all about? Sure. Um, our school, this is our very first year of operations this year. Um, the school, the mission really is to provide an excellent uh, education for all students and to make sure that they're college ready by the time they graduate. And so um, it's a mission that uh, is pretty common, I think, among schools. But uh, we know that uh, with traditional schools, as well as a lot of charters, uh, we're still struggling with uh, making sure college uh, students are college ready by the time they graduate. And so we have a very well-rounded curriculum. So mm -hmm. our theme is STEM. And so again, with my engineering background, uh, that doesn't that wouldn't be a surprise. No, it makes uh, sense. So 
Uh, so that's very important to me, but it's also very important that we have a well-rounded curriculum. So we have music, um, for instance, uh, as well as the STEM activities for students and, of course, the four core subjects um, where we have very strong curriculum as well. So as you came to Albuquerque, you said about four years ago, and you, you looked around and you said, you know, this, there's, there's a hole. What kind of, it must have been. You identified that there needed to be something new or something more. What led you to saying, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and start a, a new charter? Because that's not an easy thing to do, is it? No, um, it's, a, it's a quite an involved process. Uh, I am a state charter, so I had to write the proposal, um, get the community support that I needed, mm. uh, as well as uh, get it approved by the Public Education Commission here in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So it definitely is uh, a rigorous um, process, uh, to say the least. Um, but again, um, having worked in four different school districts in the past, um, I really believe that at this time I could make a bigger difference if I uh, really founded a new charter. Um, and so there are lots of ideas that I've picked up along the way, uh, different things of that nature that I uh, learned in my uh, doctoral program as well, um, and those types of things I wanted to implement. Uh, and so I thought it would be a great opportunity if I started my own school and really put those ideas um, into practice. Now, you shared that this was your very first year getting going. Yes. And, of course, this entire year has been, you know, immersed yeah. in COVID. I right. mean, there's really not a, a single person that we've talked to that has not had some sort of impact with COVID. So what did you see as you were starting a brand new school in the middle of a pandemic? What was, what was that experience like? Yeah, definitely uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, well, obviously... Imagine. When I wrote the plan and got it approved, this was pre-COVID, right? Sure. So we had a planning year in between in which you, you know, you find a facility, you hire your teachers, you get your curriculum all together, you know, really get those final things done, make sure you meet all the state requirements and things like that. So it was during that phase mm -hmm. that COVID all of a sudden hit. So I was going to a lot of community meetings. And so I would say one of the biggest adjustments was just not being able to advertise the school, not being able to get into the community and really tell people uh, what we were about and that we're about to open this new school in the fall. And so that was a huge shift uh, for me because I was really going to a lot of events. So people don't know us, right? Because we're a right. new school. And so it was really important to get out into the community and spread that word in person. So that was a huge change. Uh, the other thing was the technology itself. Uh, at first, we weren't going to be a one-to-one -one school. You know, my goal was really to teach kids how to build computers as opposed to just use them, right? And so uh, I made that pivot as well. So we did decide to go one-to-one. -one. Uh, we're a very heavy technology school anyway, and so uh, the infrastructure was there for us. And so as long as every student had a PC, uh, we knew that they could do the online instruction. And we didn't know at that time either whether school was going to start on time, whether there'd be maybe a two-month delay. You didn't know. No, and, and so, we're still feeling yeah. our way along yes. months, a year later. Right, we? right. And wow. so we had to make sure that everything was in place just to make sure that the teachers and the students had the tools they needed uh, in case we didn't ever, uh, that we didn't come back this year. So you, you uh, like, I'm sure like many schools, you probably eventually came back as, as I think pretty much everybody was, was ordered to reopen in, right. in April. Right. So you started seeing kids back. I'm sure that was in some ways uh, refreshing, wasn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, there are a number of students who really are chomping at the bit uh, to get back into school, as you can imagine. Oh, sure. um, and so about half of our students uh, did choose to come in person starting April 5th which is what the governor uh, basically said they wanted uh, the schools to do. And so it's been successful. We had to start the um, cleaning service. We had to start the food service and things like that. Um, but once those things were in place uh, so that we can make sure that everything was cleaned according to COVID guidelines and sure. things like that, um, uh, we've made it happen. And so the teachers are in person, of course. And so what we did was we split the schedule. We have four sections of sixth graders. So we made two online and two in person. That way the teachers didn't have to do both at the same time. And so that has worked out pretty well, too. So I should probably ask the question, what ages of students and grades do you cover? Do you only teach sixth grade? Yeah, this first year we started with six as our first grade. And each year we're going to add one more level. So next year will be sixth and seventh grade right. up to twelfth. So you're starting in the middle school and then mm -hmm. moving moving forward from there. As, as parents are thinking about 20... 21 2022 mm -hmm. which is really at this point that's that's the next step unique qualities what it makes aces technical charter school unique from somebody else who might be doing stem okay um well 
One thing is being an engineer myself, uh, I've definitely integrated the STEM throughout the curriculum. And so all of the teachers are involved in STEM activities in some way or another. Uh, and as we know, we think of STEM and we think of only math and science, but classes like English and even music uh, have a lot to do with STEM as well. So we did a STEM day. We did two STEM days this year. The first one was uh, geared towards aviation. And so the entire teaching team put together projects of talking about the history of aviation and social studies, for instance. Um, and things like that. And so uh, the second one was about sound and music. Uh, and so even the math teacher had um, different experiments that dealt with sound and measuring sound and things of that nature, decibels. So there's science in all the different classes, not just in English, not just in, I'm sorry, uh, science and math. So um, that's one thing. Uh, we've had volunteers to come and speak that are in the STEM field as Ooh, well. I imagine that's exciting. Yeah, so it gives the students an people. opportunity to see people, right, who are in the field, who are doing the, uh, things in the STEM field that are exciting. So that's obviously a very important part of the program as well. Tell us about some of your goals. I'm sure that uh, like, like any administrator, you have a, have a plan as to where you'd like the school to be. So is it to add one grade a year? For, yes. Or is eventually you might add all of high school in a year? How will it all play out over the course of the next three or four or five years? The current plan is to add just one grade per year. Uh, and the hope is that we will get that grade right <laughs> and then uh, be able to continue to build from that point. Um, uh, we do want to do things like partner with the universities, uh, like whether it be um, UNM, um, just to uh, New Mexico State as well, to do projects and internships and things like that for our students. Also local business. I've got a couple of engineers at Sandia who want to come in and help students with programming yeah. and things like that. So we have uh, a lot of things in store. Um, competitions are also very important to me. And so uh, the robotics competition, the, sem the supercomputer competition, and even things like the spelling bee, I really want our kids to be engaged and involved in the science fair and things like that. Um, so I think that'll be a very important part of our school as well. Year one, what's the biggest joy? You know, as you think about this, this really, even in COVID, I'm really pleased this worked out so well. Um, you know, honestly, opening during COVID uh, was a huge uh, thing uh, to, to really be able to get off the ground. Uh, we've never missed one class. Uh, we've had 100% live instruction using Zoom um, and Schoology and different technology tools like that. We purchased instruments for every student, and so every student has learned music uh, this year. We had a winter concert, which was uh, exciting to do. So the fact that we've really been able to launch the school, hold all of our classes, uh, still have things like music, has really been a huge success this year. If folks want to get in touch with you for the 2021-2022 school year, what's the best way? Is the best to go to the website? Do you have Facebook? How can it get Yes, uh, we are on Facebook uh, at ACES Tech, uh, and we have a teacher who does a great job posting on there. Our website is www.aces, A-C-E-S, public schools with an S, dot org. And my phone number is 505-506-1186. Appreciate having with us Dr. Jerron Campbell talking to us about ACES Charter Schools right here in Albuquerque. And uh, hopefully this will get great information to you as you make decisions for the new school year. On the 700 Club, reaching out to those in need, going to the far corners of the earth, making our world a better place to live. The pure joy of giving to others, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, clothing the poor, how Americans just like you are making an incredible difference around the world on the 700 Club. Yesterday, Ruth, we talked a little bit about a parable that Jesus shares in the book of Matthew, chapter number 13, verses 31 through 32, where he talks about the, the mustard seed mm -hmm. and how it turns into a great tree. Yes, right? yes. All right, well, you know, one of the, the principles that I think that we need to, to remember in our lives is that all of the seeds that any of us have planted have not all been good. Right. Can I be honest with you today? I don't care who you are. You know, there, there's been seasons of life where probably we have regrets about the seeds. But if you yes. have changed crops and you've made some decisions to get it right going forward and you've been doing that, keep planting those good seeds because eventually that harvest is coming. Isn't that encouraging? Because sometimes we think it might be too late, but it is never too late. And God is good. And to hold, hang on, because just like, it's like we think we didn't get in this position overnight. We mm. didn't get to where we are overnight. So we're not going to get out of it overnight. It takes 
your faithfulness and your determination to continue to plant those good seeds. Here is a great promise dealing with our finances. You know, most of us would like to be financially free. We understand the principles of Proverbs where it says that the borrower is servant to the lender. Mm -hmm. Listen to what God's promise is in the book of Malachi dealing with tithing. He, uh, he says Malachi in the, 3, 10. 10. Yeah, you want to read it? Malachi sure. 3, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord God Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour so much Pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for it. See, God desires to bless your life if you will obey. There are, there are things that are connected to our obedience that he will bless. Mm -hmm. And without us being obedient, know that you are restricting blessing in your life. You, you can't, God has never blessed disobedience. Never, uh -huh. ever. That's right. So we have to get into accord with the Lord, right? Yes. And, and obey him. But here's a verse that says, start sowing good seeds mm -hmm. and see if I won't track you down, open the windows of heaven and pour blessings into your life that are going to overwhelm you. So much that you will not have enough room for it. What does that mean? That means God's going to bless you. Bless God's going to bless you in abundance. Galatians tells yes. us, Galatians chapter 6, 7th and 8th verses says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be Amen. mocked. A man reaps what he sows. I mm -hmm. like that. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap eternal life. What you are choosing to sow today is going to bring a harvest Amen. in your life. That's good. Hang on. Keep sowing good seeds. You're going to see them come your way. Isn't that encouraging? It is. That's great. It really blesses our life. Well, thanks for being with us on Spectrum today. We certainly look forward to you joining with us for the Preach-a-thon from Evangel Christian Center. Starts at 10 o'clock on Friday. Goes till 8 in the evening, at least probably about that long. Hope you'll be with us.